Hi, my name is Steve Bjork. I'm CTO and co-founder of MindTouch, and I'm here with my friend and colleague Aaron Fogerson. And today we want to tell you a little bit about our most recent release, DeckWiki Hakes. Um, it was just released a few days ago, and there's a lot of new, really exciting stuff that we've done with it. But before we go into that, let's just quickly see how, how, where we came from. This was our architecture with Gooseberry, our previous release. Um, it was basically uh, an entirely an application with entirely in PHP. Uh, you would access it to your browser or the internet, and it would connect to the database. So that's that's what uh, Deki Wiki looked like before. However, now in here, things look quite a bit different. What we did is we decided it would be a great idea if Deki Wiki had a complete REST-based API that you know you could write code on, so you could take data in and out. Uh, that's really the way to go. So what we did is we split the PHP layer in two, and we added a new layer here that contains the API. So the API is written, instead of PHP, is actually written in C-sharp on top of .NET, but it's still fully compatible with Mono, so you can actually run it in any environment you like. Uh, you quite regularly run it on Debian, which is uh, used on our service. So you don't lose any of the portability opportunities that existed before with PHP. And so now PHP, instead of accessing directly the database, actually goes through this foundation piece, the API, to do, to do all its operations. Similarly, the browser can also access the API and do uh, JSON requests to get data from it. Our API provides data both in XML, PH, PHP format actually, and JSON. So it's really, really flexible to get to, uh, to work with it. There are a couple of knobs, and we'll get into the uh, the kind of operation you can do in the API during another video cast. Um, but just to highlight, we basically have a way to, uh, um, to of course, interact with pages. You can interact with files. You can interact with users, and so on. And this is not a one-way interaction uh, as, as is commonplace with many APIs where you can just read information. Now, this is a complete bi-directional API. And that's why we took this approach. Rather than to grafting the API to the side of PHP and have it kind of a second class citizen, we wanted to make it a first class citizen in our new architecture. We think this is going to have some really exciting opportunities for us in the future um, as we make this layer a little bit less uh, tightly coupled and so have the opportunity of actually even being able to run the PHP bit somewhere else in the web. So, the, why did we do this split? Well, we found out that before when we had this big monolith of a box, if we wanted to do new cool features uh, in PHP, we would often kind of create regressions in the business logic. Uh, the wiki engine behind DeckyWiki is actually quite sophisticated, especially since we added permissions, tagging, and a lot of other features. So by splitting the, uh, the design into these two layers, we now have our presentation in PHP and our business logic with our REST API in this box here, which is written in C-sharp. So you can customize, and you don't have to worry about uh, breaking the business logic. So you're saying that we've got this API as the foundation uh, of the application, and the presentation layer is in PHP. Separating the presentation from the business logic, that's pretty standard. But why are we going with C-sharp on Mono with PHP as a presentation layer? Specifically, why PHP? Well, PHP is, 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 is a great foundation to have for the presentation layer. It's, it's really easy to pick up, it's very popular, there's a lot of great talent already out there around it. And especially, it's really easy to modify. And that's why there's a lot of experimentation going on. People don't really want to modify that much the business logic, the core logic behind the application. What they want to do is customize their key wiki so that it has a look and feel that is specific to their needs, that can integrate it into the site. And that all, all happens here. It has nothing to do with the, the API. Great, so this is a really great point because uh, you and I both know there's a lot of very excellent designers that like to get dirty in PHP, but they're not going to rewrite the application entirely. Let's say somebody does want to extend the application. Yes, so with the, the move to the API, we have really made a fantastic leap forward into a much more service-oriented distributed architecture. Uh, I mentioned before that you know, the API is REST-based, which means that the, there's no SOAP or anything. This really works across a lot of different technologies and languages. Actually, you can even just access a lot of the API function right from your browser. But more importantly is the extensibility. That, that has become a really big focus for us. 
and there are two uh, different kinds of extensions that are now in haze and more in the future. The first one is the ability to basically have as many login agents as you want. In the past, you were limited to the user management that existed in DakiWiki Gooseberry itself, and you had to cope with it. So if you had multiple uh, different login sources, like maybe LDAP, or already a registration system, maybe you already have a million users on your, on your website, uh, you didn't want to be in the business of, of kind of merging these databases. So now you don't have to. Instead, you can plug in one or more, any number, of custom login services, and DakiWiki Hayes will manage those with the built-in user accounts. So there's a, there's a whole uh, sophisticated permission system goes with it, group management and so on, and we should definitely talk about it some, some other time, but that's a fantastic area we're going to do, so we have cool work that has happened there. The other extension, which I'm equally excited about, is what we call live data services. We had that actually in the past. It wasn't really, you know, uh, we didn't make a big fuss about it, because I never, I never was really happy about how, how it was working, but now in Hayes it's really coming into its prime. Live data allows you to embed custom data elements into your wiki pages, be it RSS feeds, chat rooms, multimedia files, rating systems, I mean, you name it. You can embed anything really you like. And the, extens the extension mechanism is equally awesome. Rather than to have to kind of like configure and plug you know, uh, your own code libraries into the, uh, the Becky Wiki Foundation API, it's actually done over web services. So everything here can run across the web. You don't have to run it even on the same node where Decky Wiki is running. This can be anywhere across the internet. So it's again, it's all done over XML, all over regular HTTP, uh, allowing you basically to write these live data services in any language you like. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're saying that with the existing architecture, it's the case that we can have multiple concurrently running login and authentication systems that are kind of just being invoked over the web, right? So just through standard HTTP, yep. right? Um, and then in, addi and in addition to that, uh, we can extend the application through what we're calling live data services, and those can exist on um, any number of additional servers elsewhere, doesn't matter what platform, and, and more importantly perhaps, they can, those live data services can be written in or white space Java. programming language, for example. Yeah, I'm not so sure that white space has the proper support for HTTP, but yeah, <laughs> Ruby or PHP, or any of those languages, it's, it's really quite straightforward. It's, it's, it's actually a step beyond that, and again, this is one of the topics that I'd love to elaborate to another video cast. These services can be, can be registered in two ways. Either they run locally, which means that, that they will be under the service management of the Wiki itself, or they can be run remotely. And we'll be running a few of those on mytouch.com actually in the future. So you can then just register them by put, pasting a URI into your control panel and start embedding this, this uh, type of content over live data services. Um, straightforward. I think this is a great first start. This is our first video podcast that we're doing. And we're going to try to keep it small in size. Um, this is a nice overview of the architecture. And the next one will get perhaps into the live data service a little bit more. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Yeah, and uh, don't forget to post in the forums if you want specific topics addressed.